they go to the mall, and there's a, uh, there's a, I experience that when you spend money, there's a feeling, uh, uh, you would, shall I just call it euphoric? There's a feeling about it. Now, after you spend it, when you get home, what do you get? Remorse. You, you get what? Take it back. Yeah, take it back. Buyer's remorse. <laughs> but there's a release there of uh, pent up energy. You know, it could be, could be that way. But anyway, let's get started here. Father, bless our lesson today and that we can apply it to our life personally. And it would be an encouragement to us now. In Christ's name, amen and amen. Now, again, uh, be reminded if something bad happens, you know, that, folks, that's the devil in your life. Now, uh, what are the three things you're going to have to face? What are the, your three enemies? The world, the world, the flesh, and the devil. You're going to have, remember, Paul writes that the world is, he's, the world is crucified. So we have to crucify or kill the world. Your own, you know, I preached a sermon, I only preached it once, it was before the building was built and we were upstairs there. And the three crosses in the arena of faith, there's the cross of Jesus, and there's the cross where there, uh, you know, we say, well, there's the two thieves. No, this is beyond that. There's, there's the cross of Christ, there's our own flesh is being crucified, and that's a slow, agonizing death blows. It takes a lifetime for us to kill that. And then the world is crucified. All right, yeah, if that's the end of Ephesians, in, in, in there somewhere, is the, the three crosses. The world is crucified, we are crucified, and Christ is crucified. All right, so this slow agonizing death. But you're going to have trouble with the world. The world is what it is. The world, the flesh, you've got to contend with your own sinful self. Every time you look yourself in the mirror, and you say, man, that's half the problem right there. The world of flesh, and then the other part is the devil. And we don't need to give the devil all the credit, right? Uh, we can give him at least a third of the credit. The world of flesh and the devil. Those are the three things that you're going to be bad at. Uh, all right, now to our lesson. Uh, Acts, and you don't have notes on this yet uh, in front of you, but I, I'm most certainly you will. It contains 38 verses. Just some simple uh, mechanics of the uh, chapter. 38 verses. The paragraphs, paragraph markings, if your Bible is marked that way, and not all Bibles are marked that way. It begins in verse 1. Anytime there's a new chapter heading, that would be the beginning of a new thought. Uh, now, when you're listening to what we call the almost Christian radio station, is the commentator or whoever is the uh, one making the comments on your uh, on the radio may say, "Well, the thought continues from." I don't know why the uh, authors put the chapter marking there and it follows from the one chapter to the other. Well, whoever put those in there had a had a, a flow of thought, and we trust and rely that it was the Holy Spirit that uh, put that in there. And we're, we just stick with where the chapter markings are and, and we rely on that. Verse 1 begins the new thought. And then verse, notice at verse 13. Now if I skip one, uh, help me out and, and find one. Because I can, I can miss them. Verse 13, uh, you should have a paragraph marking. That starts a new thought. Now the one that, uh, the book that is really hard to outline like that would be the book of uh, Proverbs. It does not, uh, it's very choppy, so almost every verse is its own thought. It's, it doesn't flow that way. So you have verse 13, the next paragraph marking is verse 17. Verse 17, you have a paragraph marking, that little squiggle, what, however the... Uh, Publishers printed that in, in there, 17. The next one is found at verse 28. There should be a paragraph marking there. Now, if you scan through your Bible, if there's one that I missed, I'll point out to me. Verse 28. And then the last one is found at verse 36. So then we outline the chapter that way. All right, so the outline of this chapter, now listen, you could come up with all kinds of outlines. 
and uh, uh, outlining, outlining, outlining. Preachers outline. That's one of the very first things that uh, we would learn in school is to outline. To make an outline. People can follow an outline. People follow that. And the Bible outlines itself that way. So that people can follow this train of thought. Now, uh, I, I alliterate, so we pick, I picked all um, W words. Uh, the work, uh, our first one in verses 1 through 12, and you'll have this outline for you, is the work of Paul. Paul then goes uh, to, and makes a, a, like kind of a big uh, a rush or a, a, a big tour of all the churches he had started. He goes through the area visiting the places where he had been and where he had pre preached. So you have the work of Paul. That is the work of the evangelist, is to go and review these churches. The work of Paul. Verse 13, the next one. He went before the, he, and we went before to ship and sailed into Asos. They're intending to take Paul in, for he had appointed, mindful himself to go afoot. And I mark that as the walk of Paul. Paul did not necessarily sail with them. He sent them on before by sail, and they decided to meet someplace. So physically speaking, not spiritually speaking, maybe I, when I uh, 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 make comments on will spiritualize it, is he physically walked where the others were sailing, where they took ship. So the walk of Paul, verse 24 uh, in, which would be the paragraph marking for uh, verse 17. If you go to verse 24, but none of these things, this would be our third point, uh, which would line up for verse 17 through 27 on those paragraph marking. None of these things move me, neither count I my, my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry. It's been given this ministry, which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. That's what we preach. We do not preach the gospel of the kingdom. Remember how many gospels are there in the Bible? There are four different gospels in the Bible. Now the glorious gospel is similar to this. You can then argue and say there are only three. <clears throat> and there are books that uh, describe this, this kind of stuff. So he is testifying the gospel, the grace of God. That is what we preach. What is the grace of God? What is the gospel? Right now we say, sometimes people say, well, it's the good news. Well, what's the good news? It's the, the gospel message is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. All right, so our third one is the witness of Paul. That's what he does. He goes out and witnesses. That's what we are to witness. The gospel of the kingdom is to be witness to the Jews. That's what Jesus did at the beginning. Witnessing of the coming kingdom. All right, so when the Jehovah's Witnesses do that, you know, there's always a certain amount of truth to heresies. You've got to hook them in somewhere. There is a coming kingdom. All right, we're not denying that. The coming, the, but we don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. And, and we do not do not preach in Revelation the everlasting gospel. But we preach the gospel of the grace of God, which is the glorious gospel, which is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. So that's the witness of Paul. That is, that is what you and I are to do. To witness for Jesus. It's it, Folks, it's a simple message. By the way, in music, what, what do people appreciate in music? Simple music or complicated music? Humble. They appreciate simple music. Lawrence Wolf would say to his guys uh, and gals that are performing, if you juice it up, the, the audience can't follow that. Is is if uh, if you want to live high off the hog, make it and keep it simple. So I have bought a record player. I got all the children's records out of the house. I kept some seventy eights that my mother had, and there was uh, some old Spike Jones in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I threw a Spike Jones on, 
and it was da, 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 da. yeah you know they're playing the horns and 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 you know it's it's a funny record but right away uh the 13 year old benji he was could actually sing the song as soon as it was over he could actually sing the song with the words it was i always wanted a bunny or something like that he could actually sing the song in the words because it's easy to pick up on it. It's easy to remember. The moment you have this rock and roll, man, there, there's not one melody you could ever remember if you played it from now to doomsday. There is none. There is none. It's racket. There's three chords and a turnaround. So the gospel message is a simple message. Why don't people accept that, by the way? What, what is, there's several reasons. It's an offensive. What is the very first thing people say how they want to get to heaven? And why they can't accept the gospel. They want to work for it. The very first response, people say, what must I do to be saved? They can't accept, one of the things they can't accept is, you mean this thing is free? <laughs> yeah, this is free? If, if people are offered free, they, will, they might say, well, there's no value to it. If, if there's no price tag on it. There's no value to it. What, what, they want to earn it. But the gospel message is very simple. Just accept the fact that Jesus died for your sins, went to the grave, rose again from the dead, proving that God accepted the payment. And they people cannot accept that. It's a simple message. And by faith, we accept that. And by faith is to bring about salvation. The witness of Paul. Verse 31. So the next Next paragraph marking begins at 28 is uh, take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flocks. He's, he's doing what it states in verse 31. He's, he begins, take heed. Look at verse 31. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. So there is the warning, the warning of all. He warns the believers that there are going to be grievous wolves that are going to infiltrate the flock. And by the way, uh, uh, we are likened unto what animal? We are sheep. And, and then uh, those that are not Christ, we can liken them unto goats. The preacher is to preach sheep food. Sheep eat sheep food. Goats do not eat sheep food. And since they don't eat sheep food, they'll sit a while and then they want to go elsewhere to receive goat food. And when wolves come in, wolves eat sheep. That's what wolves come in to devour the flock, to eat the sheep. Draw them away with some other, some other gospel, some other, other thing. They draw disciples after themselves. Verse 37, we can come up with the last W word. Verse 36, and when we kneeled down, uh, thus spoken, he, when he had thus spoken, he kneeled down and prayed with them all, and they all wept. The weeping of Paul, that everybody weep. So the weeping of Paul. So this is an emotional time and uh, that they probably would never see him again, uh, that they would see his face no more. Uh, on this side of glory. On this side of heaven. So the weeping of Paul. So that will be our outline for this chapter. So we're going to begin with the work of Paul. All right. So in verse 1, it begins with an uproar. Notice how it begins in, 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 uh, in verse 1. It begins with an uproar. Look at the end of the chapter. It, it ends with weeping. So the the... The opposite of this big kerfuffle and uproar, and the opposite of that is love. So it ends with brotherly love. That's how it ends. And hopefully when you have a situation like that where there's a big uproar, you hope it ends in brotherly love. By the way, how does the Old Testament end? The very ending of the Old Testament. We'll, we'll go there just for the fun of it. How does it end? It ends with a Starts with a C. Nobody knows. Curse. Yes, you're right. You got it. 
Unless I smell now, yours now, I already know you know this. It's just uh, you, how do we how do we learn? Is repetition, repetition, repetition. So if you go to Malachi, the last book of the Old Testament before Matthew, you go there, the very last verse, Malachi. Uh, it ends, that's the very last word, it ends with a curse. Ends with a curse. Okay? So, uh... Blessed I do. Pardon? Blessed I With good old things. With, with a curse. But it ends with a curse. No, right. unless... It, no, it is just give you know, if, 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 when, if, either or. The idea it ends with a curse. How many uh, how many books in the Old Testament? Just for fun, how many books are there in the Old Testament? Do you remember? Pardon? Thirty-nine. Then how many books in the New Testament? Four. Twenty-seven. So we got thirty-nine books in the Old Testament. Twenty-seven books in the New Testament. Isaiah. How many chapters are in the Book of Isaiah? Sixty-six. Sixty-six. So you've got these 39 and 27 books. Total books in the Bible are 66, and they line up with the 66 chapters of Isaiah. Generally speaking, Isaiah chapter 1 through 39. Now this is what the theologians say. You know, makes for good teaching. You may find exceptions in the book, but they say chapters 1 through 39 are all negative and more of judgment. And then from 40 on to the end of the book, which would be 27 chapters, lines up with the grace of God and God's grace in the New Testament. That's how that lines up. All right, so it begins with an uproar. It ends with brotherly love. <clears throat> the world, uh, these are just comments I'm making. The world in its chaos is, is an uproar. Is an uproar. Look what happened yesterday on the news. I mean, how many were killed in Pittsburgh? 11 people were killed in the synagogue. Hey, you know, folks, there's one group of people you don't go after. And that is God's people. You know, Israel. You just don't go after them. You're going to pay the price for that, man. And so anti-Semitism that is growing worldwide, I mean, uh, any of those that are in the Old Testament that were anti-Semitic are on the ash heap of history. Name some of them off. The Philistines. I picked the easy ones. The, the Hittites. The Amorites. The Jerusites. The Hebesites. The Stingbites. Whatever, whatever the, the other ones are. They're done away with, folks. You don't hear them anymore. But the Israelites are still around. The Israelites are still around. So you don't pick on God's people. Where is Germany? They, they lost the war. And you could say, well, Hitler was upset about the, Vers is it the Treaty of Versailles? The Treaty of Versailles, they were upset about that. Uh, they were put under the thumb with that and they wanted to get out from under it. And, and on and on it goes. But in the end, they're on the ash heap. You just don't pick on them. All right, so uh, the world, it is chaotic. It is chaotic. And it's in an uproar. Paul's travels, uh, we can look at verse 1, 2, 3, and verses 4 through 6. He goes from Ephesus to Macedonia, from Macedonia to Greece, from Greece back to Macedonia. Macedonia is a big area, so it's, you know, it's kind of like the east coast of the United States, then to the west coast of the United States, as far as an area. And then Macedonia to Troas. That's, you, you could trace his travels. And in the back, if you have maps in the back of your Bible, you can follow them. Uh, and he goes about in his ministry, he goes to Ephesus. Paul went encouraging the churches. That's a, how does the angel do it in the book of Revelation for the uh, seven churches? What is the angel? You know, the angel of the Lord comes to every one of the churches in the book of Revelation, Revelation 2 and Revelation 3. How, how, do, how do they go about it? Well, how does he address the church in, in his full address? And our topic here is 
he goes about encouraging the churches. What is the, uh, uh, how does he end, he said, but I have somewhat against thee. The very first thing the uh, angel does when he addresses the church, he encourages them. He loves them. Uh, he, he, he points out their good points. And then when he's done, but I have somewhat against thee. And he ends that way. You're not going to win over, uh, make, you know, friends, you know, by going up to them and complaining. You, you know, you know, by bringing up negative the very first thing. That's the biggest turn on for people. You just don't do that. And and God's way of dealing with people as he deals with the churches. Well, let's go to Revelation. Paul goes around encouraging the churches, not putting them down. Not putting them down. Let's go. Uh, uh, let's go to Revelation 2. Well, let's just go to the first one. Remember how to remember it. It's ESP, TSP, L. Just think of the 1960s ESP to get the acronym for the names of these churches. Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Laodicea, I mean, um, Thyatira, uh, Sardis, Philadelphia, then L was the last name to see. Look at verse 1. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience. See, those are all upbeat. And how thou canst not bear them which are evil. See, that's positive. And thou hast tried them, which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars, upbeat, and hast borne, and hast patience, and for my name's sake has labored, and has not fainted. <clears throat> now every time the angel of each individual church is addressed, they are addressed the same way. It isn't the same things that are said, said, but every time it's first positive, always positive. Now notice in verse 4, Revelation 2, 4. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. Then it's negative after. Always positive first and then negative. You know, you're not going to win over family and friends by being negative. You've got to be positive. You, you want to win this person over. You win them over. And then and then if you have to, you know, tell it like it is, you do that. If you do that at the beginning, folks, they're never going to hear you. Never, ever going to hear you. This is a practice that not only can be practiced in your personal life, I would assume companies do this. You know, they're talking, you know, they have these seminars and how to address people. These are just simple things that are biblical, that can be learned, it, it, it can be learned and made a habit. And you can learn this, not even by studying the Bible, just by other, by practicing what other people are successful at, and practicing that. You know, just because they may not be in the Bible doesn't mean they're not doing biblical principles. This is a biblical principle, is being positive, upbeat, encouraging, you know, let's say a child is making a drawing, and what does grandmother do with a child's drawing? Hang it up on the they, they hang it up on the refrigerator. Is it a work of art? It's awful. It's awful. You know, they can't stay within the lines. You know, I've got people that say, well, I'm glad they don't stay in the lines. Now, I'm one to stay in the lines. You've got to learn to stay in the lines. You know, Did you do that when you were little? Part, well, not when I was real little, but I, I learned to end up staying in the lines. Folks, if you don't stay in the lines as an adult, what happens to you? You don't stay within the lines. You're in jail. <laughs> you got to learn to stay in the lines. Right? So, always teaching a kid they don't stay in the lines. You know, I don't know how good that is. But what does Grandma do? They put it up there, and even if it's as awful as it gets, they say, boy, Grandma must not. You know, and, and I really do the best I can think it's really a good job. And they can't see anything wrong with it, and grandma loves them. And so they post they post it, post it. And then they could be taught to make it better. And I, I try to teach the kids that if you uh, if you want to draw something and make it look alive, it's really simple to do. Is you just make a point, just put a point on paper, 
way out here. And then you draw a square. Make a square. Just make a square. And then take each corner of the square, draw a straight line to the point. Right? And you have a, a perspective. And all of a sudden, and, and then you, you put a rope, you, you put a triangle. But by the you know, I did that sermon. That was the very first one you made the video on. Is I I, I did I drew a drawing and I uh, we we haven't done that in a while. Drew a drawing, but I did this thing about engineering. Engineering is uh, this one class, they just said they took these shapes, a triangle, circle, a cylinder, a square, all these different shapes, and the teacher said, put it together. Make whatever you want. I, mine was just a disc of, I didn't know what they wanted. But you could build a house out of that, you could build a car out of that, you know, just a rectangle, and you put the circles on it, and you put a circle on the top, you got a car. All engineering is is putting these different shapes together, and the same for making a house. And so I, I put the shapes together. I think it was Zach or Luke. I said, well, what is this? And he said, oh, it's a house. They, they could see it was a house. You put a point over here, and you draw the lines from the corners to the point. And then the next thing, you know, you have a perspective. And then all of a sudden, it was almost like they, they're shot. It becomes alive. And you get training kids to do better. They learn to do better. Some figure it out on their own. Others have to be taught that. But Paul's ministry, uh, after Ephesus, after this big kabuffle, he went about encouraging the churches. So encouragement is, is very important. You know, if the kid is singing, you, know, you, you encourage them in music. You don't say, oh, you sound lousy. Will you stop it? That's no encouragement. Uh, let's go to uh, Philippians. Philippians chapter 1. Now you might say, oh, come on. Everybody encourages. That's not, the, that's not true, folks. There are kids that are just brought up in the, in the crazy. Where none of that is, uh, uh, none, of, none of the above is present. Verses 3 and 4, Philippians 1, verses 3 and 4. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. You know, there, there's different ways of presenting things. It's, um, it's the joke I use. I, I don't know where I heard the joke. I heard it on the radio. Is you say to the girl, your girlfriend, every time, every time I look at your face, the clock stops. But to say it in a nice way, when I look at you, time stands still. You see, you said the same thing, but one actually is meaningful and the other is very insulting. So face to the top of the clock can be taken two ways. <laughs> yeah, so you know, either your face stops the clock or time stands still. You see how one is romantic. Well, and the other is a big turn off. Yet they both say the same thing. All right, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. All right, that's positive. Always in every prayer of mine, for you all making requests with joy. Now, were there bad things that happened at Philippians? Probably. He doesn't bring them up. Is it just where the, the women were fighting? I think women were fighting there. I, I, I think. Maybe, maybe this isn't the church where they were. Yeah, look at, uh, go to Philippians 4. There were two women that were fighting in the church. Now, he doesn't bring that up at the beginning. He brings that up at the end. Go to Philippians chapter 4. Now just be glad you, you're not named these names. Some of these biblical names are really odd. Look at verse 2. I beseech Eudeus and beseech Syntyche that they be of the same mind in the Lord. <coughs> He's encouraging them to get along. And so that, that's a negative thing. And he brings that up at the end. And he hopes that, that he makes restitution. He wants these two women to make restitution of peace. But at the beginning, see, he is very encouraging. So always remember that. Uh, and by the way, those things can be learned. To say people do them naturally, you know, the natural man does a lot of wicked things. And so these things uh, can be learned. It's just like any other thing. It takes the three P words. 
Practice, practice, practice. Practice, practice, practice. Uh, 2 Corinthians 11. 2 Corinthians 11, go to verse 28. This was a burden of Paul as he is visiting all of these churches. You think that this was not an emotional time for Paul? Something that, that when you have emotional uh, things going on in your life, uh, where is that? Is it in Ecclesiastes? Uh, much, uh, you know, he says to, uh, I don't know if it's Felix or King Festus, uh, King Agrippa, Paul, much study hath made thee mad. Uh, in Ecclesiastes, I think if you study much, it's a weariness to the what? No, weariness to the flesh. When you uh, when you dig a hole, and we're, we're talking about a four-footer, you dig a, a post hole by hand, are you tired? Does it wear, wear your flesh out? You're going to have a good night's sleep. Especially when you get clay. Especially when you, well, in our yard, there was so much screening in there, I was glad to get clay. I was so glad to hit Ohio, but at least I could dig that. Yeah, I got through the cement. So uh, when you when you study, uh, my worst day, I could fall asleep anytime, any place, in any position. On Friday after, I I, mean, I could crash. Is when you study, you you're, you're exhausted St studying. You can just fall asleep. So Second Corinthians eleven twenty eight. Beside those things that are without, that's outside the church, and that which cometh upon me daily, what came upon him daily, the care of all the churches. So he cared for them both physically by visiting them, by writing them, and by praying for them. So there was this uh, a big concern for them. And so uh, Paul had that, and that could be a, uh, very much a weariness of the flesh. Verse 3, back if you would to Acts chapter 20. Acts 20, verse 3. And there abode three months, and there abode three months, Paul stayed there. And when the Jews laid wait for him, and they're always laying wait for this guy. They're always waiting for him to come down the road, and we're going to ambush you. Wait for him. As he was about to sail into Syria, he purposed to return through Macedonia. Now it doesn't say why he changed his mind or why, why it was changed, but the Jews laid way for him. So my point there is Paul's protection. Paul was protected. Paul was about to sail into Syria, but had a change of heart for some reason. Change in his heart. Either Paul foreknew the danger or the Holy Spirit redirected Paul to protect Paul. Acts 19, uh, verses 30 and 31. Go back to Acts 19, verses 30 and 31. And when Paul would have entered in unto the people, we covered this last week and the week before, the disciples suffered him not, allowed him not, not to go in. And certain of the chief of Asia, these would be those that are non-Christian, which were his friends. You can have friends, not fellowship, but friends that are not Christian, sent unto him desiring him that he would not adventure himself into the theater. So Paul is protected along the way. Paul is protected along the way. And so a lot of times, uh, you know, there's this chick, chick track. Um, I think it's This Was Your Life. Is you're, you're just walking down the street, minding your own business, and in the alley, about ready to jump out at you, is a guy with a, uh, I believe he's holding a blackjack. Anybody know? Anybody here know what a blackjack is? I think he's holding a blackjack. Or it could be a gun. I'm not sure. By the way, can you kill a guy with a blackjack? You can kill a guy with a blackjack. I think they practice it so that they just knock them out and not kill them. I, there's a certain, if you don't knock them out, you're in trouble. But if you hit them too hard, you're in trouble too. And then he did murder. Uh, I forget what he's holding. Anyway, he's about to attack and there's an angel in the alley holding him back. All right? So as you and I are going about our business, uh, you don't know what's going on in the world that you and I cannot see between uh, 
the devil and his crew and God and his ministering spirits that are sent, uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14, ministering to us to protect us and to keep uh, bad away and, and, and so that we don't get, get injured and so on. And so you don't know uh, uh, what all takes place behind the scenes. And we just go about our life thinking, wow, you know, it was a beautiful day. Well, w without knowing, you know, God held some evil back that would have put you in the hospital or whatnot that you and I don't, are, are not uh, aware of. Now, I would assume in that track, uh, a, a chick, a Jack Chick has in there verses to support that, to support that. Uh, and I just quoted Hebrews 1.14. Verses 4 and 5 of chapter 20, Acts 20, Paul's companions. He had, it, it tells their names, it tells uh, <clears throat> where they're from, and not all these people were with him from the beginning. There's Sopatar of Berea, Aristarchus of the Thessalonians, Secundus of the Thessalonians, Gaius of Derby, Timotheus of Derby, which is Timothy, Tychicus of Asia, and Trophimus of Asia. Now the only uh, name in there that I recognize for today would be Timothy. Anybody know a Gaius? You know, in our... In, in, in our culture today, you don't use that word. Give me, give me a name that would have the word gay in it. Give us a picture. Gaylord. Gaylord Perry, yes sir. When I, when, I, when I was growing up, the neighbor across the street, the wife's name was gay. Her name. Her it could, name be, it could be both. It could be a man's name or a woman's name. Yep. Gay. Gail. Gail. That's another one. I, I know my mother would say, this is like 30 years ago, why would they, they took a good word and ruined it. <laughs> yes. I know Sergeant Gay, last name. Oh, okay. Uh, you don't miss Sergeant Gay. There was Gay. a Marine Sergeant. His name was Holly. Ever heard of a guy's name is Holly? Yeah. Buddy Holly. Well, that's, no, this is the first name. Holly. That would be a woman's name. His last name was Belcher. But he was like 6'6", and you didn't mess with Holly Belcher. How about Sue? Sue, and a boy named Sue. Uh, another would be Patrick. <clears throat> you know, Patricia and Patrick. And, you know, kids could get teased about that. But So Gaylord, you don't hear that. You know, Tim, you hear that. Uh, but these other names, you, you don't hear that. You don't hear that. All right, and then I have a bunch of uh, verses to support that, but, but let's pick that up here. We're over the time, and we will start that uh, there, and we'll show where these men had met Paul and where they're involved in his ministry. And, and, and over the years, Paul's ministry from the uh, early 30s, you know, when Paul gets saved, till when Paul has his head lopped off, till the mid 60s so you got 30 some years paul then uh, with with these men because they, as he's picked them up along the way had reproduced himself all right so the idea is that somebody would mirror you along the way uh, you, you may have one you may have 10 you may have 100 hey if you have just one that picked up on your good traits and mirrored you and that you had taught along the way. You made an accomplishment. Amen? You made an accomplishment. Just one person if they would do that. All right, so we'll start this uh, uh, the next time you and I meet. Father, bless now the preaching to follow in Christ's name. Amen and amen.